Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and happy Monday, October 23rd, 2023. It's been a little bit, but we're back for a full Weather Center segment as of today. We had a lot of continuing coverage over the weekend as Hurricane Tammy barreled through our Lesser Antilles, and she is now officially on her way to the north, providing no significant damage or concern for our island nations down there outside of that wraparound moisture you guys have been doing battle with for what seems like the last two to three days now. I have a lot of interesting information to communicate to you, not only regarding Hurricane Tammy, but with our 95 L invest area down in the Southern Caribbean. There's one particular reason that that system stands out to me quite a bit, and we'll get to that here in the video. There's a lot I want to break down today, so we're going to jump right in. We're starting on National Hurricane Center's homepage. Here are our two current areas of question. We have Hurricane Tammy still leveling out at 80 mile an hour winds. We've been seeing her holding intensity. She's not looking the best, but she's also not looking the worst on satellite imagery as of right now. There is a little bit of dry air trying to work in along its southern flank currently, preventing from that center of circulation to really properly close close off and continue an intensifying trend as it continues to work its way very slowly off to the north, now down to a whole seven miles an hour. Down in the southwestern Caribbean, we have our Invest 95L. This was newly highlighted a couple of days ago by National Hurricane Center. We've been rapidly seeing the favorability chances for it to develop elevated quite consistently over those last several days. We now just had a 2 p.m. update come out not too long ago, and we're at an 80% not only in the next two days, but in the next seven days, mainly because we're right on the threshold of collapsing right right into Nicaragua. It's currently moving west at a very, very slow rate. Kind of, you could say, north-northwest at this time. There is a clear, pronounced low center of circulation just off the Nicaraguan coast. It is anticipated to make landfall and eventually exit into the East Pack. And like I said, there's one reason I want to talk about this, and it's probably not what you guys are thinking. Anyways, first things first. Here's Hurricane Tammy. We're looking at the visible satellite this afternoon. You could see that there is a very apparent eye feature trying to get itself going right through here. So we do have a pronounced center of circulation, but of course, as you can see here, pretty much what we've been dealing with the entire life cycle of this system, especially as it was bearing down on the Lesser Antilles of the Eastern Caribbean, there's been dry air persistently trying to dig its way into the core of this system, and I think that's why we've been a little steadfast in terms of what Hurricane Tammy's trying to do and trying to strengthen. It really hasn't had an opportunity to do so. We saw a little bit of market intensification while she was wandering overhead the Leeward Islands, but since then, it's been holding steady at 80 miles an hour. We haven't seen too much flux fluctuation in terms of its central pressure either. Is this a healthy storm? 100%. You could see a clear, distinct level of outflow along all quadrants of this hurricane. However, because of that dry air still trying to intrude on that eye wall and eye center for that matter, we're probably not going to see her deepen down too substantially, and a lot of our intensity guidance indicates the same as well. She's moving over fairly warm waters. They have since cooled off since what we saw back in August, September, and even early in the earlier parts of October, especially when we had the whereabouts of Hurricane Nigel and especially Hurricane Lee, moving over that same general area. We're not dealing with as hot of sea surface temperatures, but we can still sustain a hurricane, and if that, a major hurricane. Am I predicting she's going to go major? Absolutely not. We still have too many environmental factors inhibiting strengthening of this storm, but it will be worth watching just because of the history and the potential mystery, for that matter, that this track holds for us as we go over the next five to seven days. Real briefly, I just want to come on over to the College of DuPage Water Vapor Satellite to show you guys what I'm talking about. The main reason I brought us here is to show you that we do have dry air moving its way off to the east and southeast along the southern flank of this storm coming off of the Bahamas and out of the Gulf of Mexico. This has been dry air associated with not only the polar front jet, but the subtropical jet that's really helped to bring out a lot of the copious amounts of dry air that were previously parked over the southeast and the Gulf of Mexico over the last few days and throughout the weekend for that matter. Our nor'easter and our associated trough is now to the north. I'm outlining the trough itself and the frontal system is embedded in the same general area, albeit you can't really identify it on this water vapor satellite. This is the system that wanted to try to take Tammy and slingshot her off to the north northeast and get her out of our AOR faster than we can snap our fingers. Unfortunately, it looks like this trough is coming off the coast a little bit weaker and if you look over to the left hand side of the screen over the Gulf Coast in the deep south of the United States, our subtropical ridge is trying to build in very quickly which is going to help to evacuate that long wave trough and help to supplement the ridging we have not only across much of the Atlantic. You can see this massive of anti-cyclone spinning off to her east, but it's also going to help to merge levels of high pressure down at the surface, and what I believe is going to help to block her from trying to move off to the north and pick up forward momentum and get out of our AOR, avoid Bermuda and the southeast for that matter. We'll talk about that here momentarily. It's also very interesting too because National Hurricane Center has this system forecasted to go extra tropical or post-tropical, I should say, before either impacting Bermuda, stopping and moving west, or slingshotting out to sea, and I think the main reason is if you
If you look up over the Great Lakes right now and just out to the east of the Great Lakes region, headed into the northeast United States, there's another little embedded vortice, another little cold pocket that we were talking about last week on this channel that is still forecast to drop out in towards where Tammy is located right now. And I think what's going to happen is if that does hold true and we see that cold pocket dig its way south and break off from the polar front jet, that's going to help to induce some pretty rapid modification of Hurricane Tammy. And that's why I think that they're going to go post-tropical with this pretty fast before even diminishing it from hurricane intensity if you look at that forecast track. All right, so here's the six Zulu European model. I'm pulling this up because we don't have the 12 Zulu in just yet, but it's going to communicate the message just fine. I want you guys to focus on what happens in this pinkish purple violet box that I'm drawing over the eastern United States and just to the north of where Hurricane Tammy is currently parked. As you take this loop through time, take a look at that trough moving across the northern Atlantic. And then as I mentioned, that subtropical ridge tries to build back quickly across the mid-Atlantic region, the southeast, into the Ohio and Mississippi valleys, ridging all the way into the Canadian border and just to the south of Ontario, Quebec, and the James Bay area. That's how sharp amplitude this ridge is trying to build. In response to this, what's going to happen as those ridging features try to merge, you see that there is a quick little breakaway pocket of upper level cold air. That upper level cold pocket, that polar low that breaks away and starts to really amplify how much modification we're getting out of Hurricane Tammy. I'll go ahead and erase the ink so you guys can see. We have this large area of anomalous activity or lowering heights. This is 500 millibars here, guys. Lowering heights indicating that we do have breakaway cold air that has moved to the south of the polar front jet, or I should say equator word of the polar front jet. Notice how we have our blue shading over the North Atlantic and very blue shading over Hudson Bay, the Northern Territories of Canada. And the only other blue shading associated with this chart right now is with Hurricane Sammy in that cold pocket wrapping her up in its vortex. This could also suggest that as she gets wrapped in, it is going to slingshot her out to the west and eventually the southwest because entrenched under this large area of ridging, these features are not going to have a whole lot of stimulus or stimuli to act upon them to either get rid of them, move them in a certain direction, and the remnants of Tammy, if it remains a closed low center, will essentially rotate through that area of jet energy and steering flow, if you will, and move off to the west and then the southwest along the northern apex and in the backside of this upper low while it just sort of sits there and stagnates and modifies as we use that term quite a bit on Weather Center Nazario. We have a lot of mystery and a lot of watching to do with Tammy. Right now we have the icon on the left, which has done very well with this storm's track since it came off of Africa almost two weeks ago now. And on the right-hand side, we actually have the UK model. The UK is another reliable source. I haven't pulled it up enough on this channel, I feel, to give it the recognition that it deserves. But both of these are showing that slingshotting effect, missing Bermuda just barely off to the south, and believe it or not, headed for the coastline of the sunshine state of Florida. You track this through, and we have the zero. Zero Z UK on the right, the 12 Zulu of the icon on the left, and both of these models have Tammy holding on to most of its intensity, and once it begins to move off to the west, yes, it does begin to weaken because it's underneath a lot of shear, a lot of the shear induced by our subtropical jet and the interaction of the polar front jet over parts of the United States moving off into the Atlantic, helping to push that trough that we saw in the chart previous to this further out to sea. However, you see that the UK model cuts off after about 144 hours on this loop anyways. Unfortunately, it's more of a mid range model as opposed to a lot of the other models we typically use. But if you look at the icon on the left-hand side, it is and has been calling for a South Florida landfall between maybe the intensity level of a tropical depression, somewhere to a low to mid-grade tropical storm. A few of our Euro and GFS ensembles actually suggest that the environment could be favorable enough to see Tammy potentially hold on to a lot of her strength. Will there be weakening? I definitely believe so because we have dry air already acting upon her as we speak. Will there be substantial weakening or a washing of this system entirely. I gotta throw my hands up guys because there's so many moving pieces here and we're still quite a ways away with how slow she's moving that the ball's up in the air. We don't really know. We're kind of left holding the bag just waiting and seeing at this point and using the best judgment calls we can looking at all the different dynamics in play in the environment. Here's our 12Z Canadian model and for a while there the Canadian model was actually one of the outliers. It has been doing fairly well all hurricane season long and this model previously wanted to see Tammy lift up, try to make a close pass to the Bermuda Island before she shooting out to the north-northeast, posing no harm to anybody else after it finally vacates the tropical Atlantic altogether. Now, if you take this through time and you leave that arrow on the screen for you guys to use as reference, the system tracks off, does intensify a little bit on the Canadian, and then notice how before it could get up to the same latitude line as Bermuda, it immediately starts headed to the west, retaining a good amount of its intensity until it gets closer to the Bahamas, and then the Canadian model actually wants it to remain a very remnant low before being scooped up by our next very vigorous frontal system you can see 
coming across the United States, headed into the mid-Atlantic region, pushing into the Gulf of Mexico. You can really see some good thickness packing with it as well. So I think this is going to be our next southeast United States Gulf of Mexico polar front coming across the United States. That's going to help to evacuate any substantial feature out there. You can also see that the Canadian model is anticipating what we're going to talk about here momentarily, some sort of a low pressure center developing in the Caribbean and moving to the north. And if it holds on to its intensity with that very, very potent cold front coming down right in through here, I had it previously highlighted. I deleted my ink. That's going to pick this system up and move it across the southeast or potentially wash it out altogether because of how much cold air and probable shear we'll see in the upper levels. A lot to watch for, a lot to monitor. Here's the super ensembles for Hurricane Tammy. As you go through time, you can see we have very good consistency that she is going to continue to meander somewhere in the West Atlantic before suddenly we have a large swath. And you know what? To tell you the truth, you can honestly see a lot more ensemble agreement, especially in the short term, right in through this general region that a lot of our models, to include the Euro, the UK, the GFS, want to take this to the West, button up against all that ridging being entrenched under our upper level ridging, as well as that cold pocket trying to pick it up and spin it cyclonically back towards the southeast United States. We're really going to have to determine what happens with her intensity. We'll have to watch the structuring of this storm. We'll have to watch its intensity over the next few days. If it tries to deepen a little bit more, it could possibly retain some of that intensity before it makes its either westward path or it continues off towards Bermuda or potentially escapes out into the Atlantic altogether. Right now, it seems like our ensembles and our operational models are thinking a little bit more along the realm of a westward track. But again, there's so much gray area, guys, that this is not set in stone. We're going to be closely monitoring this here at the Weather Center because there's a lot of people in its path still, whether it be Bermuda or the southeast United States and the Bahamas for that matter. All right, we're moving on from Hurricane Tammy. This is 95L. And as you can see, we actually do have a fairly organized system down there. It is an invest area still, although it really is beginning to look a lot more like a tropical depression or maybe even tropical storm vents. We haven't had a named identifier attached to this system just yet. As of 2 p.m., as you guys saw earlier in this video, we did have the probabilities elevated to an 80-80. We have that big blob of red in the Southern Caribbean, and you can see we already have a large amount of thunderstorm and rainfall activity moving its way into the east coast of Nicaragua, impacting areas of Honduras as well as Costa Rica just off to the south. Now, the main reason I want to bring this up is not to discuss formation, not to discuss potentially etching vents off of our lifts, but the main reason I want to highlight this is because this goes to show that the Caribbean environment, especially in terms of tropical cyclone development, is very, very hot. It's very warm right now, and I'm not talking sea surface temperatures alone. When I say hot, I mean we had this system form up, I believe, 72 hours, maybe 96 hours ago, sometime, I believe, either Friday or Saturday of last week. And now you have it. You can see we have a closed low-pressure center and a lot of good consolidated thunderstorm activity with it. So if we do end up seeing another entity like this come together in a good amount of increased thunderstorm activity across the south or the west central Caribbean, clearly that area is ripe for some tropical cyclone formation because we're looking at something right now. This segues me perfectly into the very tail end of this video. We're getting ready to close out soon. I hope you continued watching up to this point. If you have, I really appreciate it. If not, we'll talk more about this at our Tropics Talk tonight. But as you can see, the Euro is almost at about 100% in terms of developing that system, at least into a tropical depression off the Nicaraguan coast, and then moving it quickly through into the East Pack, where it could potentially redevelop once again, especially since the East Pacific has been very favorable for tropical cyclone development. Another reason I want to highlight the fact that we do have something spinning up as quickly as it did is because if you go forward in time at four to five days out, you can see another round of probabilities starting to edge into this Euro probability chart. Probabilities only go up and up and up. And then once you get to the back end of the run, we're actually scraping into the 35, 40, almost just below the sub 45 percentile that we could see something else develop in that region. And usually I would take this with a hefty grain of salt because our Canadian model, our GFS ensembles for that matter, have been highlighting so something trying to escape out of the Southern Caribbean for what feels like almost another month now at this point. But we had something decide to show itself and it very quickly organized. So if we get another little area of low pressure thunderstorm activity, try to consolidate, it goes to show that that area is still incredibly conducive for tropical cyclone development. And the fact that these ensembles and our probabilities have been incrementally increasing the favorability of seeing development, it has my eyes open. I'm watching that area closely, especially with what we have on a lot of our other operational models, which we'll get to right now. This may be hard to see from you guys' perspective. We have in the top left, the Euro. The top right, the Icon. The lower left, the UK. And at the bottom right, the Canadian model. We have all of our most recent model data. There are some different runs in here. We have the Zero of the UK and the Euro. We have the 
the 12Z of the Icon and the Canadian model. Unfortunately, UK and Euro come in a little later, and at the time of shooting this video, we don't have the most recent data, so we're going to use 0Z for now. The point is, as you go towards the back end of the loop, there goes Tam, and you can honestly see a lot of these models mirroring one another with it coming to the north and then immediately ejecting off to the west before beginning to dissipate as it makes its way towards the southeast United States. But on top of that, if you pay attention real closely, this is 850 millibar wind, so I can have all the models pulled up together on this four panel. We have one low forecasted, we have two lows forecasted, we have three lows forecasted, and we have four lows forecasted. And I wasn't singing a song, I promise. I hope that didn't come out too sing-song-ish. But anyways, guys, it goes to show that all four of our deterministic models as of right now are pinging on another area of low pressure forming down there. And as I discussed earlier in this video, we have that big front coming down in the associated trough in the upper levels that may not want to have it on a collision course for the Central American landmass, but rather pull it to the north towards Jamaica, the Cayman Islands, and potentially into the Gulf of Mexico and the Southeast United States. And that'll just about do it for this segment of Weather Center Nazario, guys. We're going to go ahead and start closing out the video. We had a lot going on over the weekend. I believe I did between four to five different live streams, which is very abnormal for this channel, but I honestly want to say I'm very, very thankful that so many of you tuned in for the sporadic live stream coverage I had of Hurricane Tammy. I believe at one point we have almost a thousand viewers in one of my live streams, which is unprecedented for this channel. And honestly, I want to thank you guys from the bottom of my heart for entrusting me with your weather content as well as joining me as we rode that storm out digitally together. You can expect we will have continuous coverage of whatever else this hurricane season has to throw at us despite us being now on the very tail end. We're coming up on the last month of hurricane season and it looks like we may not be done talking the tropics just yet, guys. But again, thanks to all of my latest subscribers. Thank you for everyone out there who tuned in from the Caribbean islands, especially the Lesser Antilles. It's been phenomenal communicating and interacting with every single one of you, as well as all the continued support of my very consistent subscribers who've been with me since day one since we started broadcasting about Hurricane Adalia back in August. We've officially reached the 5,000 subscriber threshold, guys, and I couldn't be more humbly proud of not only our community that we built, but of this channel in particular, and I'm so, so grateful that you guys do continue to put your trust in me to provide you with accurate, safe, and realistic weather content, not only now, but hopefully going forward many, many months and hopefully years to come. We'll see you tonight at 8 p.m. for our Tropics Talk. I really look forward to communicating with everybody once again. It's always a great time. Tonight should be a little bit more casual since we don't have anything immediately bearing down on any populated areas down there. We'll talk a little bit more about the impact still being felt in our Leeward Islands as well as what could come of not only Hurricane Tammy, but this new feature that could be on the horizon for the Southern Caribbean, that hot zone, if you will, still for tropical cyclone development. Thank you all for joining me on this wonderful Monday afternoon. I hope that your weekend was spectacular. I hope the start of your week is even better for that matter and you continue to have a great week ahead guys we'll see you soon this is weather center nazario signing out